Have you ever broken a bone? I have. I've broken my ankle and I've torn the meniscus disc in my knee. And the thing about these injuries is, even after they're physically healed, there's still a mental healing that you have to undergo. For me, my ankle was in a cast for three months. I wasn't able to walk on it. I wasn't really able to do anything with it. But even after that three months, after the cast came off, after the ankle had regained its strength, after I was seemingly consequence free from my actions, I still had a mental block around it. If I'd be out running and I'd try and make a hard cut or I was playing a sport and I'd try and change directions too fast, I'd always do it off of my fully healthy leg. I wouldn't trust that break to not break again. See, I was being protective of my injured bones. I was trying to prevent them from getting hurt again. I was trying to hide them away. Because that's what we do when something's broken, right? We try and hide it away, and when we fix it, we really want people to see that it's never been broken in the first place. That's like the ultimate test if something's been fixed great. If you can show someone who didn't know it was broken, it's new completed form, and they a, can't tell that it had ever been broken. Sorry, that may have been a little bit jarring. Uh, I don't have sunglasses on, I'm wearing a different shirt. It's actually a different day. Uh, genius Aaron Taylor over here decided to upload the video and not check it after it uploaded. And uh, apparently only the first one minute did. Uh, genius part two of that situation is my computer was running low on space, so I deleted all of my footage uh, to make room for new stuff. So I'm a little bit uh, low on yesterday's footage, meaning I don't have it. Uh, so I'll try and recreate the rest of the video here. Anyways, back to the video. So we have this deep desire to ignore the broken parts of ourselves, to try and find a way to cover up the aspects of ourselves that have been broken. Uh, but what's so great about this Kintsugi process is that it actually requires the exact opposite. It requires special attention be paid to the parts that are broken because that's really where the beauty comes in. You see, it can be hard to look at the brokenness in our lives or to look at the brokenness even in an object and rejoice in it or celebrate it or even just be okay with it. But that's really the whole point of this Kintsugi process is that it's not the object itself that's considered the art. It's the process of fixing it that the true value comes in. See, people aren't looking at the broken clay cup and saying, wow, that used to be a really great clay cup. They're looking at the gold that has stitched it together and saying, wow, that's gold, that's amazing, that's valuable. You see, the value isn't in what the thing was. The value is in what fixed the thing. And really, that's what Christianity comes down to. Our value isn't in who we are, how great we are. Our value isn't in how righteous we've become. God didn't command us to be righteous to enter the kingdom of heaven. Naturally, we should become more righteous as we become a part of the kingdom of heaven, but God commanded us to be reborn. In John chapter 3, it says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless they are born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. See, it can be hard to admit and it can be hard to accept the fact that this really isn't about you. This isn't about us. This is about Jesus. That's what's so great about this process is it's not about fixing a cup that was great. It's about taking something that was normal, seeing that it got broken and became worse, and making it into a new creation that's better than it was before. That's what this whole process is about. And if we're focused on ourselves, we can't see that. We'll still just see the cracks and the breaks in our bodies. We'll still just see the areas in which we fall short and we'll fail to see the areas in which Christ covers over those. It can be hard to accept sometimes that we aren't enough, but we really aren't. In a way, we don't have to be. That's not the call that Jesus has for us. The call is to find new life in him, to become a new creation through his atoning sacrifice. And see, once you have that down, this whole it's not about you thing, which 
can be discouraging actually becomes freeing. See, it's not about you. It's about Jesus, and he's the greatest person for it to be about. So get on board, get happy, get used to the fact that you're not gonna be able to fix this. Get used to the fact that no matter how much self-improvement you do, uh, you're never gonna be good enough, and fall on your knees and thank Jesus that you don't have to be, because there's a place for you in his kingdom because of the sacrifice he made for you. There's a place for you as the bride of Christ because he loves you so much. All right, that was our third video on this art form of Kintsugi. Uh, I can't wait to come at you tomorrow with our new video. It's actually going to be today. I'll be wearing the same shirt. Um, but I'm hoping you're finding it really encouraging. Again, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I hope we can find some hope in uh, a new form of usefulness, which is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. All right, have a great day.